Hey there, this is Sid with Sawmill Creek Homestead. I wanted to do a quick little video on a wood burning stove that we recently purchased. It's a Vermont Castings is the, is the make, um, but the model is a Resolute Acclaim and they made three different uh, models that I'm aware of <coughs> of the Acclaim. They had an, the original model was solid cast iron and didn't have any of the ceramic on it. And then they had a 0041, which is what this is. And then they started making the 2490 after that. And then, of course, at this point in time, in 2022, 2023, they do not uh, make these anymore. But they still make other models that are very comparable, and they have a lot of similar parts. And I couldn't find very much information out there on these stoves, so I thought I would show how I rebuilt mine, because you can completely rebuild them and make them like a new stove. And if you need some information or where to get parts, there's a company in Montana called Mountain View Hearth Products an excellent company. They gave me a lot of assistance. You can find online uh, parts manuals and they even sent me an owner's manual for, for my stove. So <clears throat> what I did starting off is I discovered, have you ever purchased something and then had some buyer's remorse and realized that if you would have known some information before purchasing, you probably wouldn't have made the purchase. And that was the situation with this stove. However, since I already had made the purchase, um, now I'm going to redeem this stove and I feel like that's how God does with people's lives is that he comes into our lives and sometimes we might appear to need to be discarded and just get a new one but God will take what he has and he'll redeem it and restore it and make it new so so whenever you actually install gaskets you have to apply a bead of stove cement and so whenever you're removing gasketry that cement will still be there and you need to take like a flathead flat blade screwdriver or something like that and just chip off any of the residual stove cement left and then also sometimes even in areas where there's not necessarily a gasket where there's a seam where two pieces come together and you can see that they had some cement in there and sometimes that'll become brittle and start to fall off so you'll want to go ahead and dress that little area up and I'll show you some common areas on this stove and then you'll be able to adapt that to other stoves <laughs> so on this, I came in and got all the gas, gasketry out and then chipped all the stove cement and then came in with a wire brush and cleaned the channels out really good. Um, and then this right here is called a combustion chamber and it's made out of a material that disintegrates over time. So you have to replace these about once every 15 years or so if you're using the stove pretty regularly. So I ordered a new one of those. <clears throat> and then I've got some other parts over here that I'll show you. And when you're pulling parts out, like this is called the lower fireback, and in the, the model 0041, they used a lot of cast iron instead of using the, the, the uh, fire bricks and whatnot. And so what happened over time, the cast iron will warp, crack, and literally just start to disintegrate. And once it does that, it's really no good and you need to replace that. This is a piece that's called the upper fireback. And this part where it got so hot it warped all this is supposed to be completely flat across there so this right here is going to be discarded i've already ordered a new part i've got some more parts over here these are some parts that you probably want to take out uh, this is just the ash pan this is the griddle top this is a support that actually keeps the lower fire back in place. This is the actual dampener. It goes down and folds back up and it marries up with the upper fire back. So as long as this is in good shape and isn't warped, you can reuse this. This is actually the top of the stove, the collar for the flue. And then this is just a little plate that goes on the back of the stove. So I moved, removed all these. You have these little pieces called andirons. That's what holds the firewood in place. Sometimes they start to wear down. And there's just a few pieces of hardware to remove. And I also pulled the door off and it's in the house. And I'm gonna show you how to install a gasket on the door with glass. All right, so we're going to be installing some new gaskets for the 
Vermont Castings Resolute Acclaim. <clears throat> I'm going to start off with just the, the door glass gasket. You can get this little kit. It's kit 3421. It comes with all the gasketry that you need, including some stove cement to apply to help the gasket stay in place and then also to fill in some seams. And so this is the door for the Resolute Acclaim. Of course, it has glass, which is right here where the glass varies up with the door, you get a separate specific piece of gasket. And this particular gasket has a little tape strip on the back. And whenever you remove the tape strip, it, it reveals uh, some sticky material that actually helps the, like some adhesive that helps the gasket adhere to the inside of the channel for the door glass. So I've made my loop all the way around and just of course peeled a little bit of the tape off at a time to reveal the sticky adhesive and then would just work the gasket to where it's sticking down. So this is the only piece of gasket in this particular uh, gasket kit that doesn't require some of the stove cement in order to hold it in place. So I'm just down at the very final end here. Take the trusty old scissors Cut that flush, and then there it comes all nice and seamed together. And at that point, we we'll just lay glass inside the gasket. There's these two little retainer pieces, like this, and they have two screws a piece. And so, all the hardware that I took out while uh, going through the process of removing all the parts and pieces. I have uh, cleaned the grooves, all the little channels of the screws out, and have put some um, like WD-40 type lubricating oil in the in the threads, so that hopefully they won't. Uh, and, and even squirted a little bit of that down in the thread areas here, so that they wouldn't rust as bad or, or stick so bad and deteriorate. So anyway, we'll keep showing you this process. So if you have to rebuild your Vermont Castings Resolute Acclaim, you'll have an idea of what to do. All right, in this part of the Vermont Castings Resolute Acclaim rebuild, I'm gonna show you how to install a couple of gaskets and just once you see, once you know where all the gaskets are and where they go, it's pretty much the same concept uh, each time you have to replace a gasket. So this is actually on the door and I'm gonna show you how to replace the door gasket. So, and different gaskets will be different thicknesses, and so it's important to make sure you're getting the right thicknesses. Like some of them are, uh, there's a, a particular gasket that goes in the glass on the door, and it's a fairly small gasket. I think it's a quarter inch. The majority of the gaskets are five sixteenths. And so you'll see when we do the damper assembly here, then it uses five sixteenths, but the actual door gasket is relatively large it's a half inch gasket it's pretty thick so the first part is obviously identifying where gaskets go and then if you have not yet cleaned the track out where the gasket was when you remove the old one uh, it should have some stove and gasket cement and so you want to chip any of the excess of that out and then take like a steel brush like you would clean your barbecue pit and clean the rest of that out really good blow it out wipe it out with the uh, damp cloth, then come in and you're gonna do a dry run. So I just took this and there's different configurations of how you wanna do it. I decided that I wanted to use one solid piece of a gasket and just try to make it work its way around this track and instead of cutting a bunch of different pieces, so I did a little dry, dry run. So I'm just gonna cut, you can see I've got a pretty long tail of the gasket materials. So I'm just gonna take some scissors and cut leave myself a couple of inches. It's better to have too much and to recut than not to have enough. There we go. It's pretty tough stuff. So what we'll do in just a moment, I'll go ahead and pull this back out. I'm gonna line this track. You can see the little track in here in the groove. I'm gonna line this with some of this stove and gasket cement, and then I'll compress this back in here. And then this actual piece right here 
is part of the damper assembly. And this is where your damper actually opens and closes against this. This particular piece is called the upper fire back. So if you're having to replace parts, it's made out of cast iron. Over time, what happens is they get really hot, they start to warp, they get brittle, and it doesn't seal off properly anymore. So, and I'll do the same thing where I'll come in here. Of course, I don't have um, a solid piece of gasket material, so I'm going to use two and bring them around and then have them meet up together. And then once you get these done and in place, uh, once you get them installed, what you want to do is put them wherever they're going to go. So like the door, I'm going to reinstall the door. I'm going to put the damper and I'll show you how I do that in here. And you want whatever, wherever it goes, you want it to compress because if you just leave it like this, it's not going to compress properly. So I'll show you how to do that. Sorry for the phone shake. We are in the process of trying to rebuild our Vermont Castings Resolute Acclaim. This is the model 0041. This was the earlier, or one of the earlier. There was a model before this that was, I think, solid cast iron. And this is solid cast iron with the, like the glazed or enameled sides. And so um, whenever I got it, I ended up having to rebuild and replace a lot of the parts and so one of the things that you want to do when you're in there so this one is practically gutted you can see to the inside it's laying on its back at the moment and then there's some gasket material I know my flashlights probably reflecting too much light but there's a gasket material that goes there along the sides and then it also goes up along the top like that circles all the way back around and that's important to replace that gasket whenever you get in there <clears throat> and then just a, a couple little notes because I didn't find a whole lot of information about these stoves. This is basically what lets the air, the air dampener, for the air to come in. And so right now it's open. And uh, of course that little knob is at the bottom of the stove so you don't get to see what's going on. But basically air comes in through this bottom part and then it goes up in even through the um, some pockets inside the sidewalls and it can come in at the top and so it actually allows air to circulate through the whole unit um, and so on the little legs which if you ever need to remove the legs or replace the legs you can do that and uh, and at the end of each leg there's an adjustable leveling bolt that turns pretty easily so if you have to level it out a little bit um, you can adjust you know front to back side to side so the way I'm setting mine in an, an existing fireplace I've got these already adjusted out uh, so that they'll sit in there properly. And then this is the door, which is removable, and it has several little gaskets on there. It has a gasket that's inside uh, between the glass and, uh, and the door, and you take these two screws off each side, which then removes this little plate. You can replace that gasket, and then you've got an upper gasket that's basically the door gasket. Uh, for the firebox area and then this is a another section of gasket that seals against um, the the ash pan area and it has an adjustable door so whenever you put a new gasket in there um, then the gasket is going to be thicker and it's harder to close and so you can come in here this is where the door actually latches and this little square thing is a washer so you can take this little allen head bolt out and either remove or replace or add washers to there depending upon uh, what if you've got too much space or not enough space when you close the door and on the other side this is where the door sits right here on this little piece get my flashlight back out Ooh, that's too bright there we go and that right there has a nut at the bottom and if you loosen that nut then you can actually twist uh, that's a little rest that has threads on it and that's what the door sits on and then you can actually tighten this uh, this part right here to where it goes it recesses down into the stove body and then that if you if you don't have enough clearance up here you can adjust it you can either raise it or lower it and then you've got a little spring loaded mechanism that like bolt type thing that goes in there that holds the door in place so typically with these types of uh, stoves you have what you call your combustion chamber that goes out and this part right here your combustion package the chamber uh, they're over five hundred dollars for one of these so you want to be careful with these 
and this is the front side basically air goes in at the bottom and then it's kind of like a almost like a catalytic converter in a sense and uh and then that does like a has a combustion area inside there where it gets really nice and hot and then you have this part that sometimes it'll warp the model 0041 has cast iron firebacks instead of brick <clears throat> And um, so uh, over time, if it, especially if it gets overfired, it will overheat and warp. And then eventually this part will get so brittle, it'll just start breaking down. So this is one piece right here. It's called the lower fireback. So if it's warped, and you can look down mine and see that it's brand new. It's not warped anymore, um, or not warped like the one I'm replacing. You need to replace it. And then these little pieces are called arch inserts. It's three pieces. You've got two sides and a middle. And they have to work together, uh, you have to almost kind of angle them so that they all fit together like a puzzle piece. And then it has this one bolt that comes through here and locks all this together. <laughs> and then um, this right here is called your upper fireback. So I'll show it to you whenever I get it installed. And sometimes it's called the damper or dampener assembly. And I had to replace this as well. And it has a gasket, as you can see. So you want to put a new gasket in here. And anytime you put new gaskets in, you want to let whatever it's going to rest against uh, while it's drying, let it have the pressure. So whenever I, even though it wasn't installed, when I put the gasket in, I put this, this is the damper. And so, and, and the, it's from what was in there when I purchased the, the stove used and it didn't need to be replaced. So I didn't replace that part. So it just sits right inside there and I let it rest on there and then, um, <laughs> I'll put it here, put it in in just a second, and it just is held together by two bolts. They're pretty short little bolts, they're 11 millimeter, and they have this little washer tab. And so whenever you fasten this together, these little washer tabs, they'll hold the dampener, or damper, however you say that, together. And so what I'm gonna do here in just a moment and there's kind of a process of getting all this stuff to go back and fit right. You take the combustion chamber, and, and I think it's best to put it in while it's laying on its back so that I'm using gravity to help hold it back and whatnot. And then I can either come in from the, you can see that there's the, the um, griddle tray has been removed so I can bring things in from the top or from the front and then work the pieces in together. It's a little bit easier, I found, to put them in like that. And so the combustion chamber has to go in first. And then you come in and put the fire back, the lower fire back. I believe that goes in next. But it might be, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'm going to put it back in and I'll tell you which way it goes. So I'll show you what it looks like after I get it installed. 